Is there anything more pleasant than relaxing in the peace and tranquility of the countryside? It's good for the mind and the body. The problem is, most of us live our lives surrounded by noise. And there's more and more evidence to show that excessive noise is damaging more than just our hearing. A recent study puts Ireland at the very bottom of the list when it comes to our attitudes to noise. Does that really mean that Ireland is the quietest country in Europe? Or have we simply not woken up to the problem? In Europe, noise pollution is no longer considered simply a nuisance, but a genuine threat to public health. In this episode, we're going to find out just how seriously some people are affected, and we're going to see what can be done to turn down the volume. We already know that air travel is a source of air pollution, but unless you live along a flight path, you may not realise just how much of a growing problem noise is becoming. With the second runway due in Dublin Airport, and air travel increasing year by year, it's hardly surprising that people living near the airport are already taking action to combat noise. If you live inside a certain zone of Dublin Airport, the Dublin Airport Authority would pay for sound insulation, or they may even offer to buy your home for above the market value. Local schools are regularly monitored to maintain what is described as a suitable noise environment. The problem is, a suitable noise environment is becoming less and less achievable in modern Ireland. Noise is defined as unwanted sound. And excessive noise seriously harms human health. UCD's Professor Enda Murphy is one of Ireland's leading experts on noise pollution and has spent 10 years studying the impact of this hidden pollutant. There's much greater awareness of noise issues now than there were even 10 years ago. The World Health Organization has come out with a number of very influential reports. So, for example, they had one called Burden of Disease from Environmental Noise. And that document showed that about one million healthy life years are lost annually as a result of um, exposure to environmental noise. So there is a recognition, I think, at the political level as well in Europe that actually noise needs to be taken more seriously as a pollutant than it has been in the past. What are those health effects? The key health effects come from sleep disturbance and annoyance, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of hypertension, and in kids, higher risk of having cognitive impairments such as problems at reading, attention span, have all been linked to prolonged exposure to environmental noise. So if we're at night time sleeping, what decibel levels does noise start to impact on us? So the World Health Organization recommend 40 decibels as, as being the level above which adverse health effects start to occur. And I think much more needs to be done in the future if we are going to tackle the noise health problem in Ireland. We know that a good night's sleep is good for our health. And I wonder how much noise and noise pollution can affect this. So I've come to Connolly Hospital today to talk to an expert, Dr John Fall, about just this subject. We do know that there are different forms of sleep and different stages of sleep. So there's light sleep, deeper sleep and REM sleep. And actually people go through these phases on a certain timetable. Example would be that people go into the first dream after about 90 minutes of sleep. And that dream usually lasts 30 to 40 minutes. And then there's a dream an hour later. And that's what we call a normal sleep pattern. And there are formatted patterns for this. What are some of the reasons that people can't sleep? Right now in the modern world, there is an epidemic of sleep disorders, so people are not getting enough sleep. So environmental things are the biggest thing that disrupts sleep. External noise, external light.
When we're talking about noise, it feels like we're talking about loud noises. Do noises have to be loud to disrupt our sleep? Unfortunately, with noise, noise is a physical phenomenon. And once the noise or the sound waves hit your eardrum, and your eardrum will activate the auditory nerve, and that will stimulate your brain. <laughs> Nevertheless, there are some people that are very, very sensitive to noise. Women are more sensitive to noise than men. Women in general need more sleep than men. So then what are the knock-on effects if you don't get good quality sleep? Well, there are three big knock-on effects. And they're, first of all, acutely, people have short-term memory loss and fatigue and muscle aches and pains. Secondly, as you get longer into sleep deprivation, you start to get physical problems. And the physical problems are classically forms of arthritis, similar to fibromyalgia, where people have aches and pains and poor wound healing. We only heal wounds and we only grow muscle and bone during deep sleep. Some people will have high blood pressure and they'll have uncontrolled high blood pressure, meaning if they take medication for their high blood pressure, it does not come down. And that's often because they have a problem with sleep. The other common thing that we see is that people who are sleep deprived in general tend to put on weight. And most sleep disorders are associated with weight gain. Sleep is an essential physical function. And if you deprive people of sleep, they will suffer from it. The evidence is clear. Noise disturbs our sleep, and that disturbance is damaging our health. 